St. James. It is Sunday, July the 12th, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, also known as Proper 10. Your service leaflet is downloadable with a link below. Hope you've already done that, and if not, pause the video and go ahead and do that so you can follow along. We are starting on page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Paddan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. 
Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm is from Psalm 119. We shall read responsively by half verse. Your word is a lantern to my feet. And, and a light, light upon my path. path. I have sworn and am determined to keep, to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve, Preserve my life, O Lord, Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips. And, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand. Yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me. But I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes. Forever and to the end. Our second reading is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. 
But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In our gospel today, we have the first of several parables that Jesus tells a crowd gathered around him. Seven parables, in fact. We'll spend the next three week, weeks um, unpacking these parables. So let's start with a few ground rules. First of all, what is a parable? The word is, gives us a hint. Para, bole, from Greek. Para, meaning two or even multiple, and bole, to toss or to throw. So a parable chucks a couple of ideas alongside each other in order to illustrate a point. They are succinct, even pithy, and they're stories that illustrate a point or illuminate a principle. There's something there not to be missed, a little thing, that is that parables usually have one point. They're not big sweeping narratives that tell a long story and explain the meaning of life and everything. Instead, common everyday items or tasks or people are used to make a point. Most often, parables tell us something about the kingdom of God. And by that, I'm not talking about heaven or life after death. When Jesus spoke of the kingdom, he meant here in this life. They also often reveal a bit about the nature of God. So parables help us to understand something about God and what our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, likes to say, the dream of God's intending for us. Parables are stories that shed a little bit of light on God and a little bit of light on the kingdom of God. But they often do that in a disconcerting way by changing the way that people think about the kingdom of God, for example, by turning their understanding upside down. And frankly, being upside down is kind of uncomfortable for us. That's why it's always important when we read parables to look for the surprise. In the surprise lies the new understanding. Surprises like a shepherd who would leave 99 to find a lost one, or a father who would run to greet a son who had turned his back on him, or even a sower who wastes good seed on poor soil. Today we have this kind of crazy story of a sower that scatters seeds wantonly all over the place. Some falls on the path where birds come and eat it up. Some falls on rocky ground without enough soil to sustain it so it springs up and then withers away. Some falls among thorns and it's choked out of existence. And some, just some, falls on fertile soil and it grows like gangbusters. It yields a hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold, more than any of the seed that was sown. Now I'll bet you money that most of us have heard this parable used to talk about us about our hearts and how they are prepared to receive the Word of God. I'll bet most of us have heard a sermon or two or, or three about how to be better soil, about how to dig up the roots and pull out the weeds and add compost and turn over the soil of our hearts until we are ready to receive the seed that is sown. But we're not gonna go down that path today. We humans have a tendency to make everything about us, to put ourselves smack dab into the middle of the story. But I don't think this is a story about being better soil. It's not, that's not where the surprise is. The surprise is in the sower, not in the soil. I think this is a story about the sower and what that sower can show us about the kingdom of heaven. If we want to understand it, we're going to have to look at that surprise and see where it leads us. So first of all, let's think about the crowd that was gathered there and try to understand what, what surprise this parable held for them. These were long oppressed people. 
Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, and now Romans had all ruled over these people and held them captive and used them as slaves. All the while, prophets had been planting into the hearts of the Hebrew people the idea that it would not always be this way, that a Messiah would come and crush the opposition and set them free once and for all. Deep in their story, embedded deep within the hearts of these people, one might even say a central tenet of their faith, is the idea that this oppression would not go on forever, that they would be saved. And these folks gathered around Jesus, they were more than ready for that kind of leader. Instead, Jesus gives them a sower, a farmer, and not a particularly good one at that. Perhaps not a pleasant surprise for this crowd. I mean, not only does Jesus not describe an all vengeful God who will rescue them, but really, who plants this way? Nobody I know. I can assure you our garden here at St. James was planted with far greater care than that. Those working in our planter boxes took great care in placing seeds and seedlings in our garden beds um, this spring. They didn't stand out there tossing seed around, some landing on the playground and some on the labyrinth and some in the parking lot. And, oh yeah, good, some of it in the garden plot. Even sowers who do scatter seed tend to prepare the soil first. They take care in where the seed lands. That seed is valuable. One would never waste it in that kind of way. Not only does the sower not pay attention to where the seed lands, he doesn't stick around to tend the plants. He doesn't make sure that there's adequate water. He doesn't shoo away the birds or, or pull up the weeds. He doesn't show preference for the seeds that he sows over all else in the garden or on the path or in the rocky soil. He just scatters the seed and lets nature take its course. This kingdom that Jesus spoke of was not what his audience was expecting. They were looking for decisive action that centered around God's preference for them. They were looking for a plan, a system, a new world order in which they would be the victors. They were looking for immediate action, but instead they got seeds sown. But my friends, have you ever seen a tree growing out of a rock? I have. And amid the weeds of any overgrown yard, a raspberry bush still yields its fruit. Sidewalks and driveways and patios have something growing in almost every crack, at least the ones around my home. Instead of immediate action, Jesus shows us a God of infinite patience. Instead of a decisive plan, Jesus shows us a God of wanton abundance. Instead of a new world order, Jesus shows us a kingdom in which every sort of soil has a fair shot, where the word is offered and entrusted to all. Parables show us that God has got this. And they ask us the question, do we have it too? Are we part of the kingdom, or are we living in ways that cause us to choke God's words sown among us? Jesus said, let anyone with ears listen. Listen to the reality that the kingdom of God is to be found in everyday, ordinary events of life, like a farmer planting seed, the everyday humdrum life that we so often take for granted. Sounds kind of familiar right now, doesn't it? Listen to that ordinary life and then turn it on its head for what we can learn from it. Listen and we might find that while we all want to return to the way church used to be, we can look around and notice God's spirit and influence right here and right now. What if we ask ourselves what COVID can teach us about how to connect with those who are not in church, those on difficult ground. 
What can time away from, or for some people, time trapped with our loved ones teach us about how to treasure those that we love while we still have them? What can budget pressures tell us about what we value and what traps us? What if we wondered what racism has to say to each of us and what we could learn about our own baptismal promises from working to increase diversity? What does suffering yield when the word falls on the stony path and, or among the weeds of illness or grief? What does the experience of suffering hold for us? What could learning to sow in a whole new way show us? What if we joined that sower and chose a liberal hand with our seed, a willingness to be profligate with our time and our substance, to embrace the reality that the only way we'll ever get anything to grow is to let it go? Jesus said, let anyone with ears listen Parable give, parables give revelation to those who will listen. To those who are hungry for meaning, there is meaning. This is not a message saying, be better soil. It's not about the soil at all, in fact. It's about the sower. It's about generosity. It's about our call to follow that sower and to join in the sowing. Today we celebrate the surprising, abundant nature of God, the creator of everything, who sowed with abandon. Our very existence testifies to the generosity of God. So let's today think about being more like that God, more like that wild seed sower, and bring that new perspective and God's love into each setting where we might find ourselves. Who knows? We might end up with that hundredfold harvest. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers for the people. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this challenging and uncertain time of global pandemic, public health crisis, and social unrest, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church, and the world. For the church, that it may not grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ and serving as beacon of hope to the suffering world, we pray for Michael, the presiding bishop, 
Michael, our bishop, and all who minister in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all affected by coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of all nations, that they may work together for the common good. May barriers that divide be brought down and bonds of trust be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant public health and government officials in our nation the strength and will to act swiftly and decisively with wisdom and compassion in service to all. We pray especially for Donald, the President, Kate, our Governor, the Congress, and elected officials in local municipalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick, whether from the virus or from other causes. May they have access to medical care and regain their strength and health. Grant them your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless scientists and researchers around the world as they combat the virus, that their work may yield knowledge to develop a vaccine, treatments, and improved measures to reduce its spread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the safety and well-being of all who travel and those who remain quarantined. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts, that confident in your providence, we may be generous in sharing our resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have already lost loved ones and those who will yet suffer much such loss, that they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in the place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God smile on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. And may the blessing of the one holy and undivided Trinity be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Before our dismissal, we have a few birthdays to celebrate, or one birthday to celebrate, um, and a little announcement. So if you have a Book of Common Prayer, you can turn to page 830. Um, uh, Prayer 51 for a birthday. 
To this week, we will be celebrating Phil Schuyler's birthday. So let's say a prayer for Phil. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Phil. Uh, I want to let you know that we are still doing coffee hour after service, so at 10.30 sat Sunday morning. Click on the Zoom link that is in your email and join us. We have a pretty good time. I also want to let you know, draw your attention to the fact that there has been a little change in the schedule for morning prayer and Compline. Morning prayer will now be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Compline on Mondays and Wednesdays. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, each an opportunity to pray together. Again, the links are in your email, your Thursday email. That's all I've got. Anybody here? It's a pretty quiet crowd today, so. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.